When should a parent seek professional help for their child's picky eating or eating behaviors? There are several red flags to look out for, but before I list those, know that if you want to seek help for your child's eating behaviors, then do it. Always talk to your pediatrician to start with, if you're concerned, and listen to your gut, because that is very important. You truly don't need any more justification than the fact that you're concerned to seek professional help. Now, some insurances do require a referral. If this is the case, ask your pediatrician for a referral to a pediatric dietitian or a feeding therapist. If they decline, clarify your reasons for wanting one. Although anything more than I'm concerned and it's negatively impacting our family life should really not be needed to justify a referral. It's not a provider's job to gatekeep referrals from patients who genuinely want or need help from an expert. If you're still struggling with getting a referral, know that you can always seek a second opinion from another provider. Now, let's chat about red flags. These are the things I see that makes me think that kiddo needs professional help from a dietitian or a speech language pathologist experienced in working with eating disorders, eating behaviors, or feeding disorders. So first and foremost, feeding behaviors or eating difficulties that cause regular anxiety or concern for parents or the child. If mealtimes are always stressful, if your kid has clear anxiety at mealtimes, if it just disrupts your family time and really causes a lot of stress, that is a red flag for seeing a professional. You don't need anything more than that for seeking help. Eating should not be stressful. If it is regularly stressful or interferes with your daily activities, seek help. There are professionals out there to help you with this. Eating behaviors that disrupt other current or desired activities. So for example, you can't go out to a restaurant or eat with family because you worry that your kid can't or won't eat. This is not normal, and it's something that you can absolutely find help and resources for. Another red flag, anxiety with changes to the mealtime setting. So difficulty eating out of the home, difficulty eating at restaurants, difficulty eating at school. I'm just gonna list all the red flags here. Okay, weight loss, rapid changes in growth percentiles, or rapid increase in growth percentiles. So we generally expect a child to be growing along a curve, any big jumps across trend lines, either up or down or a red flag. In addition, I never expect a child to lose weight. If you notice this, definitely chat with your child's doctor or dietitian right away. Regularly eating less than 20 foods is a red flag. So if you made a list of all the foods that your child eats, if it's less than 20, that's a red flag, seek help. So this includes dips, like ketchup is a food. This includes different types of chips. So if they eat to Tostitos and Ruffles, those are two different types of foods. Different brands of chicken nuggets. If they eat the Great Value chicken nuggets and they eat the Tyson chicken nuggets, like those are two different types of foods that they eat. So make sure to count correctly there. But again, even if they eat 21 foods and it's stressful and concerning, that's still a red flag and still seek help here. Continuing to lose accepted foods over time without gaining any new foods. Seek help for that. Frequent coughing, choking, or gagging during mealtimes or when drinking, big red flag for seeing a speech language pathologist. It is not normal to frequently cough, choke, or gag during mealtimes. There's lots of tips and tricks and strategies SLPs or speech language pathologists can do to help with that. And there's some medical conditions we need to rule out here that can have some long-term consequences that we want to avoid. If your child only tolerates one or a few textures, or if they have like gagging or disgust with a lot of textures, speech language pathologists and occupational therapists can help with that sensory exposure for your kiddo. If your child is showing clear difficulty swallowing, excessive drooling, or excessive food spilling out of the mouth during mealtimes, that's also a red flag, and that would, would be one where I would seek a speech language pathologist as well. So I wanna reiterate here, these common red flags, you know, they're more common than you'd think. Um, they're red flags for needing professional feeding and nutrition help for your child, but you don't have to meet this criteria to seek help. If you are concerned, or even if you just want help, want a second set of eyes on your kiddo, seek help. If you're not sure if you meet any of these criteria listed, ask your doctor and you don't have to meet these criteria to go find 
a second opinion or find help with your kiddo's eating behaviors. Um, if you're concerned or worried or things are getting worse at mealtimes, seek the help of a pediatric feeding professional. It is our job to help families just like you, and we love doing it. So where to find professionals to help you? First, start with your pediatrician. Ask them for a referral. Other professionals in your network that might have recommendations for you if your pediatrician doesn't know any are your child's dentist or their school as well. Like you can ask like the counseling, the counselor at the school, they may have some ideas. Contact your insurance and see which providers are in your network. Healthprofs.com, that's H-E-A-L-T-H-P-R-O-F-S.com. That's a great resource for finding independent private practice practitioners, but many of them don't accept insurance. So just keep that in mind. You can also just search like pediatric dietitian, pediatric speech language pathologist, or pediatric occupational therapist near me on Google. You can also do feeding therapists too. And then kind of as like a last resort, you can use hashtags on Instagram, like hashtag Phoenix dietitian or hashtag Seattle dietitian and see who comes up, send them a DM if they have openings or if they have any ideas or connections for you. So keep that in mind or keep in mind that because of COVID, Many more professionals are offering telehealth than have previously, and feeding therapy can be really successful via telehealth. So depending on state licensing, you might not even need to work with someone who lives in like your immediate area. So that can be helpful too. To wrap up, there are many indications for seeking professional help with your child's nutrition and eating behaviors. I hope this video has empowered you to seek help if you're feeling concerned and has given you some helpful info about when and how to do that. See you in the next video.